internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I have a new friend, and his name is Cody. Cody, are you there? I'm there. How's it going, Brad? And you're in your car, in your car studio. I do that, too, because oh, yeah. <laughs> it works really good, because it keeps the, the sound all contained and stuff, and yeah, cars are good studios. <laughs> so I'm not sure if... Sound quality. <laughs> exactly, and it, it works really good, and without having to have a special microphone or anything, so... Yeah. This is good, and that's that's the power of the internet to be able to be mobile. That's uh, I'm a mobilepreneur. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, for sure. I don't do these interviews too long because people have that commodity of time, you know. So we yeah. uh, just get to the point and find out who you are and what you do. So the first thing is, who's Cody? Are you single, married, wild, and crazy? What uh, what's the yeah kids? Yeah, so I am married. Have been married for seven years in July. We have three kids, uh, two girls and a boy, wow. and they're six, four, and eighteen months old. So having a blast with him keeps you busy right and you got a, yep, a sure. mixture because i understand the girls are a lot different than the boys they are it's crazy how different they are <laughs> i, I don't good. have any so my, my wife's got one from another marriage but uh, uh -huh. but i don't have any kids i think yeah they don't they, right. they don't come with the with the owner's manual and i'm afraid uh -huh. <laughs> it's it's like learning it's like life you just got to figure it out and hope you're doing a good job and learn from your mistakes yeah, battery's <laughs> not included and no assembly required right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what part of town do you live in so uh, i live in idaho actually up near idaho falls oh, yeah. and we're looking at moving down towards uh utah in the salt lake area oh that's a so, nice space down there i've driven through it's yeah. beautiful down there Nice. And and where are you at again? This is Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've been here for most of my life. I spent a couple of years awesome. in L.A. and a couple of years in Asheville, but this is my roots here in Minneapolis. <laughs> Very cool. I've been there a couple of times. Went to St. Paul for a business trip, I think, three or four times there. We were headquartered in my previous job there. So Yeah. They call, nice it, the, call it the Twin Cities. You know, you got St. Paul, uh -huh. Minneapolis, and they're, they're night and day different, too. It's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of like like uh, daughters and sons, totally different. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so let's get into what it is that you do. Now, I understand that you've got a, a, a company called, is it Medieval Mentoring? Uh-huh. So I, I did that. So I did mentoring, at, um, and how I got started in it was a little bit, with my life, I learned a lot of mentoring principles and was able to overcome a lot of, uh, a lot of issues that I had with addictions, with uh, depression and different things, and as I was learning mentoring principles, one of the things that I was looking into was some kind of physical hobby that I could do to lose some weight. And I, I've lost over 50 pounds and keeping going with that. But the hobby that I found was studying historical sword fighting. So it was oh, wow. a group that studies the same manuals that they taught from in 14th, 15th century Europe. So the, the real things that the knights and the castles in that time period, what they taught then is what we learn now, focusing on that historical study. And so as I was doing that and learning this, the real skill of sword fighting and then doing mentoring for myself, I'm like, these actually go together really well with these principles. Sure. And so I've been able to combine that into teaching and especially focusing on husbands and fathers and uh, men in general, business leaders who struggled making that balance between uh, life and family and, and what you want with what you have to do and kind of the differences between there. And so using sword fighting as a way to kind of break out of your shell, do something fun and engaging, but also get the mentoring principles and, and do that. So I got a couple questions and I'll try and keep them yeah. separate, but they're <laughs> similar. Like the difference between coaching and mentoring is one of them. Uh -huh. And then I also find it interesting that you're doing something like sword fighting. And as people think about like the martial arts and sword fighting yeah. and all that, they think it's like violent, but really uh -huh. it's more just, it, it's more discipline than it is violent. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been in the martial arts. I got a second degree in Taekwondo and I've never been in a fight. Awesome. So a lot of it is more, it's not really about violence. So I'm assuming that you, yeah. this, uh, this sword fighting thing and it ends up being like, like how do you defend yourself, be your offense and your defense when you're trying to uh -huh. raise a kid? Because when they get to that certain age, you kind of got to defend yourself. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Well, and that's, that's what a lot, because this is a branch of Western martial arts, which I didn't know that there was a, such a thing as Western martial arts before, but that this is usually a part of our heritage that we don't really know. There's not schools that teach it. You know, if I want to go and find Eastern martial arts and, you know, take Taekwondo or karate or jujitsu or all these different forms from all over the world, 
but there's not much from the Western culture right. that we have. And so learning that has been a fun connection to the history and past as well. But it's, it's a lot about the discipline of how, you know, when to move, where to move and, and to discipline yourself really yeah. and learning that like all martial arts are. Yeah. And, and mindset and things like that. Uh-huh. So that's interesting. So you, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting the gist that you're sort of a coach or mentor for uh, mostly males. Uh-huh. Is that true? So I, I've had a lot of female clients, but the males is who I focus on. And that's what a really a focus on stepping back into our masculinity and really what that is to, to protect and to provide, to, to be a man and to rise up. And, you know, we, we can be entertained literally all day long, every day with the amount of resources that are available for entertainment, but we don't do as many things in providing the lifestyles that we want. And we kind of settle for what we're supposed to have or the way that things are supposed to work. This is intriguing. (laughs) So really to step into your power as a man and to be able to, to go out and create and build. And there's, you know, there's two creative forces of feminine energy and masculine. And it's like, they're both very powerful by themselves and they work wonders together. It's like, we sometimes devalue one by focusing on the other, but they're really both equal separate powers. Right. And so looking at that is, is really stepping into who you are as a man and to uh, being yourself and being that power and stepping into that. All right. So, so like sword fighting is a great way to do that. Both, <laughs> both males and females have that masculine and feminine energy. Yeah. One is just yep. more dominant than the other. Them. I totally get it. For well, sure. it's interesting because like the whole concept of sword fighting, some people think that's a weapon. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. But it's... Um, what I, as a magician, I would ask, uh, sometimes twist balloon animals, and I often got a request uh-huh. for a sword. The kids yeah. wanted swords for some reason. Exactly. And, and it, I can see how this can discipline a person into knowing when to uh, defend yourself and, and without mm-hmm. maybe striking back, like more the kung yeah. fu kind of thing. And I think that can be helpful. And also, like, like as a man, I don't have any kids, but my wife had a uh, son or has a son mm-hmm. and when he is young of course i'm the stepdad kind of thing so there's that uh, uh, uh. yeah so i yeah. was able to deflect certain energy because of my martial arts background and my discipline and knowledge rather than lashing out and saying this is my house and you're going to do as i say that's just going to yeah. create uh combat for right? sure so knowing and that's things. what we we focus on a lot of doing that is it's you, you know, you can either react to things or you can create things. You can create your life or you can react to what life is giving you. And when you're in that reactive state, that's the combative that I have to fight. It's, it's this battle that happens all the time. But really, you know, it's funny, like you say, that the more that I have learned about being disciplined and that I have seen as I've done martial arts, it's actually helped me to be more calm and to be less combative and less of that way because – I can focus on how to uh, really control myself and not right. even control, but manage is a better word and yeah. manage emotions, you know, and one of the things is men, we don't talk about emotions, you know, it's not okay to cry. It's not okay to feel things, right? That's a woman's thing, but it's like, no, really we feel and, and do that and how to manage and process those so that we can be a leader and to be a force for good and a powerful strength for good and be unstoppable in what we want to accomplish. I like that you use the term manage rather than control because the control thing, that's part of the problem, not to bring politics into it, but that's part of the problem yeah. now is we got this polarity and they're trying to be in control when I think the reality has come to a neutral space and let's come up with a, with a mutual solution rather than one yeah. side dominating the other, which is just creating nothing but problems. <laughs> For sure. Well, I mean, you think about your emotions, you know, emotions aren't there to be controlled. Like, they're, they're to be expressed. We live richer lives when we feel things deeper. If we all we do is shut down and control emotions, it's we bottle them up until we explode. <laughs> right. And we do that, we either explode or we implode, and, and it causes problems. But when we manage them and we know how to channel that as a, you know, if you say a form of energy, to channel your emotions into, well, today I'm, you know, I don't feel like doing anything. I'm unmotivated in this. So how can I use that to still accomplish the goals that I have? rather than just always having to be pumped up at 100% power. And it's like we manage the emotions because we change. We're human. 
Well, this is refreshing for a couple of reasons. One, it's a, it's got the martial arts thing into it, and I'm, uh -huh. you know, I'm not a violent person at all, but I have got the background in the martial arts, and it's it's also interesting that it's about men rather than women, because there's a lot of women's groups out there, and it's kind of nice yep. if there's a man mentoring group that you're you're creating there, and I like the idea that at the end result is kind of the peace kind of thing, but. Uh -huh. It would be fun to talk more about this, more specifics of certain ways, because I'm, I'm assuming that uh, maybe you might coach or mentor a man into how to work with his female daughter. For sure. She might have we some... We focus a lot on, on relationships. I just did a webinar last week about relationships and how to connect with your spouse. And it's like that's one of our most powerful tools that we have to create is, is working together with our spouse. Got it. And it's also one of the biggest causes of stress and frustration when we don't work well together right when you're so not talk when a lot you're about working on ourselves and those relationships with your spouse when you end up competing rather than collaborating because i sometimes exactly. say that if your mother and father competed rather than collaborated you would not be here yeah for sure <laughs> so yep. i don't like to do these too long like i said I like to keep them kind of condensed uh -huh. but um if you could before i ask my favorite why question if you could share how do we get a hold of you how do we find more how do you find your website and all yeah. that kind of stuff so you can find me on uh, MedievalMentoring.com. There's a landing page that's up that's almost finished building, but on Facebook is great. Um, you can search Medieval Mentoring, and I have a free group that I do, uh, Medieval Mindset Mastery, that we do videos and, and postings and things on that to keep going and stay in touch that way. But really, best way is is you can find the link to the Facebook page on the website right now. As so, well. so those are the Medieval key... Medieval is M-E-D-I-E-V-A-L. Those are the key I words. I spend about... 15 minutes. All right. How do I spell this word? If this is what I'm going to use. <laughs> Got it. So those are the kind of key words is medieval and mentoring. And then you can be found yep. online. Very cool. Yeah. So here's my favorite question. Then I'm going to close this off and beam it up to the universe. All right. The big question is why the big W, why are you doing this? Why aren't you like, uh, doing like a rock climbing, hiking thing in Utah, or why aren't you a ski instructor? Or why haven't you decided to create a rap video? Why are you doing this? Yeah. For sure. So I uh, really the big reason why is that I want to have the same impact on other people's lives that mentoring has helped me with. I uh, came from a whole different space. And it's like I went to school and did software engineering. I did microbiology. I did neuroscience. I went and did uh, worked as an operations manager for a plumbing and a heating company and have been bounced all over and really felt unsatisfied no matter what I was doing. And I was doing all the things that were right. You know, I got the house, the wife, the kids, the successful job. I got to travel and be trained and train when I came back and had all these great perks. But still, at the end of the day, was feeling unsatisfied mm -hmm. with what I was doing. And that there was something more that was there that, that I could do, but I had no idea what even it was. And so learning tools and techniques and, and actually the tools and systems, not just the, you know, the feel good positive, which is good, but also the techniques and tools and systems on how to change how your mind works and how to change how your life is so that you can live a fulfilled life all the time and not just, you know, I do my thing and I work at a job that I don't like for 40 years until I can retire and maybe then we can be happy. All right. You know, it's like that's not the life that that I wanted and and uh, I want to help others to achieve that. Right. Be able to be happy and satisfied in their relationships and, and in their life all the time. A lot of people have it backwards <laughs> yeah okay yep well i'm going to close this one off so cody i appreciate right. you taking the time to be on synergy cafe and the synergy collaborative Thank you. when i pop it up there i will tag you in it and i'll put your website on some of the posts okay. and stuff too and then if you could share it that's where the synergy comes along sounds great i love it okay peace love and happiness thank you cody appreciate you taking the time All right. yep thank you brad have a great day see ya